They all have different skill sets that you kind of like. Uh, they all have some things to work on, you know, like everybody on the team. Um, you know, you want me to run down them individually? Is that kind of what you're looking yeah, for as a general? Okay. Uh, Justin Hughes, um, guy is extremely sharp. You know what I mean? A good nat natural instinctual linebacker. Um, really good kid. Understands the whole concept of everything. He, he, he's, he's sharp like that, and he can do it on the field. He can take things from the – from the classroom onto the field, and, and it's great to have a guy like that on there because he can also coach the guys when you're not around. He's the leader in the room, um, gets them together and watches tape and do all that kind of stuff, so it's nice to have him. Uh, Eli is a uh, young man who's very gifted athletically. Um, he, he really fits in what, with what we're trying to do. You know, he's explosive, he can run, he's got really good range, he understands the game, he's a good natural instinctual linebacker, like the kid a bunch. Um, Daquan, you can see him when he has ability to use his athleticism. He's 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 going to be a good player. I, I, you know, we're really happy with those three guys right now. Um, Daquan also needs to just keep. He you know he's a rep guy, and and if you watch him the first day of spring ball, you would say he was solid. But every day he plays, he gets better because you know he's a guy that needs to see pictures, and, and he's doing a really good job at it. Um, and then a couple of of younger guys, I guess. I guess Cody's not really younger, but a couple other guys that are pushing for spots, you know, would be Cody. Um, you know, he's been playing Mike and Will and doing a good job at both. Uh, Leaning lean a little bit towards Mike right now, um, but doing a good job keeping up, you know, and it's really a battle between those two guys, him and Deuce, um, for that fourth and fifth spot. You know, he's a, he's a good young guy, understands the game, is, is also sharp, and, and, and it's good to have that. If you can get five or six guys, you hope that some of them mix in on special teams. It gives you quality depth and, uh, you know, kind of like where you're at. Scotty, so some of the practices then, um, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the install of the defensive system, how seamless has it been, and exactly what have been the biggest challenges in implementing your defensive set and the packages and all that? You know, uh, we, we, we tend to go slow on defense, slower than I suppose offenses would. Um, we really installed like one coverage a day for the first four days and, and, and kind of let that ride. You know, we, we might tweak some things and put in a pressure here or there, but really we're just trying to get down to base fundamentals. Uh, the hardest part for us is our offense gives us so many variables, you know, because they're so multiple and all the things they do, which is really good for us because it makes us use our base fundamentals. Um, but just to be able to align to those guys, you know, with all the movement and shifts and all the things that they're doing, you know, for us to just be able to get through. And, and, and it makes us communicate, which has helped us, you know. But we're, we're very slow. We're very methodical. Um, you hope that there's carryover from one to the next. And, and we haven't got off our plan at all. We've kind of just stayed the course. Um, it's probably not much different than we'll do it in the fall or next spring. You know, it's kind of that same methodical thing, teach the base stuff, because the thing we teach first is, probably overall you're going to use those fundamentals the most you know it's trying to how do we try to install it it hasn't been too long since you've done this you did this at wyoming as well a few years ago if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah install the you kind of you know tweak some things and, and and the good news at both places it's not much different you know overall for for some of the guys there's no difference you know for some of the guys there's some differences in there uh, how we teach and the language we use is a little bit different, so that's kind of the learning curve that they have to go through. But yeah, we use that as a plan, kind of a model, um, very similar install. Maybe one of the differences, if I could ask, uh, that was different for K State in the previous year was the nickel back was kind of between a safety and a corner, and I understand that the nickel back is in the same room with the linebackers. Now, maybe, maybe how or, or what, what's maybe the mold that you have for, for the nickel back position? How closely is that? Um, well, you know, with everybody that is, is doing things now, I think you need a guy that's more like a corner to play that spot. Um, you know, to be able to play man-to-man -man and do all that stuff is very important and match up with the slots in this league. I think that that's a huge deal. So you need a corner-type body, though through motions or whatever the case is, he could end up playing and, and do some of the similar things as a linebacker. So, you'd you know, you'd like a kid that's uh, – you know, fairly physical and can handle those things. But we just like to keep him in our room because it's a deal where he can learn those fits. When am I in the box? When am I not? When am I in the run fit? When am I not? And then if someone gets him in that situation, at least he knows what's going on. So that's kind of how we lean to it. They still do, you know, we still split them up. They'll do drills with the corners and then go with the linebackers and do some key drills. You know, they're kind of all over the place. They're kind of their own little position. If you had a, if you had a six full-time coach, that's definitely a guy that you would just say, take those guys, you know.
it's kind of its own position nowadays. The, the previous staff was big on sliding the ends into the tackle on obvious pass rushing situations and getting after the quarterback that way. I know mm -hmm. personnel matters to whether you do that or not, but are you a big believer in that on third downs? And those you, kind of you know, you, you'd like to not have to. Uh, you know, as you go through generally, you know, it, it, depending on how well, that, that all goes down to a question of how well your D tackles rush. You know, um, I think we, you know, Trey and Joe have done a pretty good job rushing right now. I think that hopefully we can use them in different facets. Maybe they just rush as a different style. I think that uh, some of the fast tempo too is you get some of the, you know, like going through the, the new Texas Tech staff, they're not going to let you sub. So you got to be able to work those guys. Uh, we haven't done any of that yet. We ha we've said, listen, we're going to try to stay the course and teach what we teach. Um, but it, if it needs be and you get to those situations and you have those opportunities, yes, we definitely would. But I don't know how many times we're going to have, you know, whether it's, whether it's getting your sub package in on third down or really the biggest thing is getting your sub package off the field if they get a first down. That's the harder one because now they're, hey, we're going to run the ball fast and you got four DNs and you're not usually as stout as you'd like to be. So uh, grand scheme of things, you'd like everybody to be able to rush, but you're right, personnel matters and, and we'll look at doing that in the fall depending on how we continue the spring here. Coach Klanderman seemed pretty excited about Walter Neal. I uh, just want to know what your thoughts on him were both as a player, person, everything that he brings to the table. Yeah, he's a great kid, man. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a guy that, uh, first of all, he's very, he's a very good person. Got a great personality, you know what I mean? Uh, keeps the room up, does a great job with that. Kid that uh, football here is very important to him and the family atmosphere is very important to him. So he wants to do the best he can for those guys, first of all. Um, second of all, he's a player that, you know, he's got a ton of experience. Um, He's physical. He he he's got good feet. He he's a guy that could play a lot of different spots for you, you know. And right now, you know, you're being uh, I guess I'm being selfish, keeping a nickel because he's like, hey, that's a good nickel right there, right? He can play, but he could also move. He could play corner, you know, if we had to get in a pinch or something like that, or we or we uh, needed a little bit more depth outside. He could go do that. He's got that ability. Um, he could be a guy that's a free just because he's a natural ball player, you know. But. Uh, you know, you like his athleticism, you like his dedication to the game, you know what I mean? You, you, you love his personality because he's, he's a little bit of a trash talker, has a good time out there, keeps practice, you know, light and, and, and energetic, so you appreciate all those things about him. When you come to a conference like the Big 12, this is wide open as it is offensively. How much do you have to tailor your defense to that just based on what you know you'll see week in and week out? Oh, no doubt. I think that, that uh, that's one of the first things we did when we got here is we just took – you know, we took the, the league over the last few years, the guys who are still around. We took games from, you know, Princeton and, 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 and Utah State and just the people that we know moved in and then looked at a cross section and said, listen, what is, you know, there's five guys in that room that have coached all different places and have tremendous ideas and, and you can use all their brains. And then said, okay, here's all the stuff that we all feel comfortable teaching and knowing and, and can make adjustments in now. Of all that stuff, how are we going to whittle it down? And that's kind of what we did. Try to make it so it's how, how it fits together. Hey, you have enough bullets in your gun for whether it's playing, you know, quarters and getting a quarterback run game calmed down or if it's uh, pressure or whatever it is. But, but we did. We whittled that down and said, listen, this is what's good for this conference. And, and, you know, that's our plan going into it. And that's what we've been working, which is a little bit – sometimes it's hard against our offense, you know, because it's not, you know – I mean, we're out there and Walter Neal standing there and they're in 21 personnel and running power at him. He's kind of like, ah, is this, ah, don't worry, you're not going to do that stuff, buddy. You know, but that's, that's how it is right now. You know, we're working through those things, just trying to teach the fundamentals of it all. I was wondering with Dustin Peavy, maybe take a sack rate and, and make him your lead. He ended up a decent display there for maybe a subsequent meeting after that. What gave you, what did he say specifically that gave you the impression that you needed a sack for him? It, well, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything that he said. It's more his ability to, hey, we're going to walk on the field tomorrow and we're going to go through this stuff and we're going to, this is how you have to fit it. This is where you need to align on this and, and we're going to shift to this and you have to align here and you have to, where he would be helping direct people around. He, he knew the placement. He understands the game as a puzzle and he can look at it and say, um, well, I know I'm going to fit here, so I know he should be here, so come over in here and help me. And, do, you know, it's kind of that kind of thing. Just his, uh, it's more, you know, some guys can talk it, some guys can see it on the board. He, he, can, he can do it. His actions are, are right right away. So that, that's impressive to me. There was a great interview that he did with you on social media. Um, he asked you uh, 
who was the best linebacker you ever played? <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, I was curious. It's still very early, early but uh, where do you place maybe Justin from a talent and skill standpoint right now, and where should you still grow? You know, I th I think that uh, his his ability to learn, his ability to uh, to see football in a in a in a conceptual way, you know, this formation might be the same as this formation and this formation because they're, you know, condensed or whatever. You know, he can look at things in a very conceptual way that helps him. That that's a very high thing and a very high IQ. Uh, um, you know, he he still needs to work on some of his just movement skills and those kind of things and, and sharpen up his technique. That's going to help. You know, when he blitzes, being able to flip his hips. You know, he we still we're still in the phase of what are we supposed to do. You know, and, and I think that, you know, with him, I think that he's, he's at a position where he can really take on the next step. How do you want me to do this and how do you want me to do this? And we're trying to get to that phase, but it's different depending on the guy. So you're trying to keep him pushing along because I think he needs that kind of work. The, the how do I do all those kind of things because he understands what to do and what tells the offense given him. We're just missing the phase in a little bit because we're still trying to bring other guys along to try to teach him what to do. So I think that you know, his movement skills and those things can improve, you know, and, and, and we can help that. We just need to get to that phase, which will hopefully the second half of spring ball and all fall camp will help him get there. Uh, Van Malone has been really energetic when he's been here and talked with us. Yeah. What's he like every day out there on the football team? Uh, he's just like that. You know, he's a people person. He's a guy that, you know, when you asked him that question when we started, he'd be like, hey, this is one of my favorite things to do. I mean, it's great. You know, he he's he's – He's one of those guys that loves being around the guys. He loves interacting with them. He loves uh, uh, getting on them, talking trash to them, or, or staying in their hip, or talking, you know, remind them of those things. You know, he, he's a great positive energy. And you need those guys on staff, you know, where they're just connected to the guys and understand how the guys think and celebrate with them and, and also, you know, push them when they're not doing right. I mean, he, he's a great guy, great personality to be around. And, and, and I think it takes all types on every staff and, and on every team. You know, you need your, you get your grumpy guys and you get your guys who are super high all the time. And I think there's a great balance in our room. And, and he's one of those guys that's always, always excited, always happy, always energetic. You know, he, he's wonderful to be around. He keeps everything positive. I also want to ask about Reggie Walker, the defensive end. What do you mm -hmm. think is maybe the next step for, for him to get better? You know, Re Reggie's, uh, Reggie's a talented dude. He, he uh, the, the finer details of things is what he needs to really keep looking at. Um, he, he does a good job with, uh, you know, his pass rush is good. He, he understands where he's supposed to fit in most things. It's, it's the little things, the, the little things that we talk about, um, you know, that we tweaked from what he did in the past. You know what I mean? Hey, here's your opportunity to get a two-way go on a pass rush. Or here's your opportunity to, you know, uh, you know, as you're setting an edge, just where you want. You know, those little detail things is really going to clean up his game. You know, he, he, he's been productive here in the past. He, he, he's a good football player, and I think that, you know, as we get into it, just when he can take shots and be more productive and what we're trying to allow him to do, he doesn't, he, you know, he falls back in, especially when he gets tired to, hey, I'm going to play it like this because this is how I've always done it. Well, there's a chance where you can come inside here. There's a chance where you can, uh, you know, have a two-way go on a tackle instead of being an outside run. You know, all those little things, I think he can improve in his game that way. You know, I, I, I think that um, up front, our, our D tackles with the quality guys we have there, they're very good run defenders. You know what I mean? I think that they uh, have done a good job holding point. Our offensive line, you know, we got four returning starters back that have played a lot of ball here, and those guys are holding up in there and, and doing a good job matching up and, and, and being disruptive, which is exciting. Um, you know, the pass rush game, they can improve on. Uh, it's probably – flipped a little bit for the defensive ends. We're very athletic, which is what we need to be at defensive end. Um, you know, I think that that's might be one of the most quality positions we have overall on the defensive unit, you know, just with the depth and guys that have played there and guys that we have, um, they're very disruptive and they can rush the passer. Now, maybe they can be a little bit more physical, but I don't know that it's gonna be a deal where it's, uh, where they're gonna see that much of that. You know, it's not even, even with our league, you know, I mean, we're doing some things on offense that the rest of our league doesn't do. So do you worry about as much? No, nah, I'd rather see him pass rush. You know, I want to, I want to see him be athletes all the time. So, you know, maybe that's, that's kind of where we are. Um, but overall, you know, the front four as a whole position, you'd say they're, they're pretty stout in there. They're stout against the run. 
our defensive ends are good pass rushers. We need to find a little bit more out of the inside guys, maybe. As things have evolved throughout spring with more practices under your belt, who, who's the guy or guys that the defense really gravitates toward as far as the leadership is concerned? You know, I, th I think it's kind of split up by room a little bit right now. I know, like, if, if you were to walk into the corners room and say, hey, who's the guy here, they'd say AJ. You know what I mean? If you were locked in the safety room, you, you would get a split. You know, you get some Denzel just because he's played a lot. People want to see what he's doing. And, and, and he's focusing on getting his technique right, but you would say Wayne Jones is the guy that's come along, and they said, wow, look at it. You know what I mean? He's talking, and and even though j Max not really around, I mean, he's in there talking, and he's learning with them. So that's a good mix in that room. Uh, in the linebacker room, it's, it's definitely, you know, Justin. He's, he's, he's the guy that, you know, leads that group, um, you know, with mixing the other guys. You know, Trey is a guy up front. Wyatt is a guy that, you know, those, those are the guys that kind of set the bar. Um, as for a defense, I don't know that we've got one guy that stands out overall over all of them yet. You know, I think that different guys have spoke at different times, um, but you also have to understand sometimes it's hard to lead a big group when you're still trying to figure out what you're doing. And I think that sometimes you get your best leaders in a position where they, when they're learning, they're not as comfortable stepping out because they're still worrying about what, what the hell am I supposed to do. So hopefully that'll continue to develop. But I think in each room, I think we have some tremendous leaders. I think we have in the rooms as an overall guy. I, I don't know who that guy is yet. I, I know, well, one, you're not even a position coach and you're not even on his side of the ball, but when your units had to go up against him, what's impressed you about Scott Thompson? You know, I, I think that he, he's a guy that, first of all, he, you know, you can tell he understands the game. You know, we're trying to throw some different things at him, and he, and he generally has an ability to uh, – to, to diagnose what you're in. You know, you can, you can try to trick him sometimes and he can figure it out. So that's impressive. Um, I think his movement skills in the pocket are very good. You know, he understands where rushes are coming from. He can step away from uh, pressure. He does a good job keeping plays alive, which is nice. And, you know, and he's, and he's got a good arm. You know, you, you look at it and say, the guy, you know, the guy can sling it. You know, he's, he's a smart dude who can move around and throw the ball. I think that he's got a lot of good, uh, good attributes. Just for clarification, out of uh, Daquan and Justin and Elijah, who's your Sam Michael Rowe? Oh, well, we don't really have a Sam yet. You, you, I would say that it's, uh, you know, Justin's the Mike. Um, Eli and, and Daquan would be the Will. Um, Cody, Deuce, those kind of guys would be the Will Mike. You know, we don't really have a Sam anymore. It's kind of a the, – the nickel became the Sam.